the minority rights deception. Some Muslim public speakers claim that we should support LGBT rights because if we demand equality under the law, then we cannot deny it to other minority groups. And if the LGBT community speak up against Islamophobia, we too should speak up against homophobia. And if everyone has the freedom to practice whatever they want, what's the problem? Because we Muslims can practice whatever we want. So is this really about minority rights? It would be a grave mistake to assume so, as this blindly legitimizes, legitimizes the secular basis to determine rights. Muslims would seem hypocritical to deny rights to others under the same basis, hence the support for LGBT by Muslim politicians. So minority rights mantra is, a, is deceptive. It doesn't mean every community can live as they want. Clearly they can't. No community can organize their financial or business practices according to their values devoid of the state system. Neither can they organize, organize their legal affairs according to their values or organize their educational affairs according to their values devoid of the state system. Only in the realm of personal freedom does a community have a choice and only then if it doesn't contradict liberal values. So for example, polygamy is not permitted. However, relationships with multiple partners of multiple genders is not a problem. The minority rights mantra is deceptive because it means accepting the state as the only means to determining rights. The state will determine who is a legitimate community worthy of rights. And the state only grants choice in the personal sphere. And as Jack Straw said in 2002, Democrats can never accept that religious injunctions take precedence over temporal law. So in the past, women and Jews were not viewed as a community worthy of rights by Britain. And blacks were not viewed as a community by America, but more akin to animals. What is legal isn't always ethical, moral or halal. So it's a euphemism for secularization. We know that Islam regulates all aspects of life, both public and private. Secularism restricts religion to regulate only the personal sphere. So the mantra of equal or minority rights is nothing but a euphemism for granting sovereignty to other than Allah Azza wa Jal. Of course, those who consent to this secular creed find it difficult to understand why anyone would object. This is because they, whether politically left or right, have accepted this creed as a basis to determine right and wrong. As Muslims, we maintain Allah Azza wa Jal alone is the highest reference for determining what is right and what is wrong. So what are the implications for Muslims? If you accept that everyone has the right to, as, to do as they like, you negate the duty to enjoy the good and forbid the evil, and by extension, da'wah itself. This principle would render telling a person homosexuality is sinful as imposing on their right to do as they wish. Thus a Muslim woman's right to cover would be viewed as equal to her right not to cover and the right to drink alcohol equal to the right not to drink. Right and wrong are not equal. Secularizing Islam So for a Muslim to argue for minority rights, the implications are this. 1. The secularization of Islam by confining it to the personal sphere alone, condoning the reformation of Islam to agree with secular liberal values and rendering the political, social, judicial and economic aspects of Islam as fanciful ideas. Secularism is not a universal human viewpoint. Liberal values are subjective and are not objective. An insidious attempt to secularize Islam it is the responsibility of a Muslim to enjoy the good and to forbid the evil. Amr bil ma'aruf wa nahi anil munkar. Fala tuta'i al-mukathibin Waddu law tudhinu fayudhinun